Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia at 100% recovery of all COVID-19 cases. Eight St. Lucia nationals are repatriated. And the Labour Minister weighs on a National Insurance Corporation amendment bill. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the national response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. St. Lucia, as of April 22, 2020, recorded a total of 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Some 13 individuals had recovered, leaving St. Lucia with two active cases. The Department of Health and Wellness indicates that these two cases have since recovered, placing St. Lucia at 100% recovery of all COVID-19 cases. More in this report. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of St. Lucia, under the advice of the Department of Health and Wellness, has had to institute several measures with the aim of combating the virus. Some of the measures that have been instituted include school closure, national zoning to manage population movement, the closure of non-essential businesses, travel restrictions, the partial national shutdown, and instituting a 24-hour curfew. The measures recommended to guide individual risk include the use of face masks, the testing, isolation, treatment and care of sick persons, and the adoption of hygiene and other infection prevention measures. Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, explained that these measures are paramount in ensuring the protection of the citizenry and has proven effective as St. Lucia now has 100% recovery of all COVID-19 cases. As of April 22, 2020, St. Lucia has a total of 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. To date, all of the positive cases of COVID-19 in St. Lucia have recovered, with the remaining two cases who were in isolation receiving negative COVID-19 results and have since been discharged from the hospital. This now places St. Lucia at the 100% recovery rate of all COVID-19 cases. Among the 15 cases St. Lucia recorded were individuals who fell within the category of high risk by virtue of some of them being elderly as well as living with chronic illness. They too recovered well with no complications or needed critical care. Laboratory testing for COVID-19 continues to be conducted both locally and with the support of the Caribbean Public Health Agency Laboratory. St. Lucia has modified its testing strategy by increasing the testing on the number of samples from the community respiratory clinics. This would assist us in the assessment of COVID-19 locally. As seen in the more developed countries, even with the apparent decrease in the number of cases and the flattening of the curve, there have been periods of resurgence in the cases. When measures are relaxed and persons become more socially engaged, this provides an opportunity for smaller epidemic waves, which are characterized by low-level transmission. The chief medical officer explained that with this information, the Department of Health and Wellness notes the necessity of conducting a risk assessment to arrive at evidence-based approach in relaxing measures while ensuring the capacity to detect and manage a possible resurgence in cases moving forward. As such, St. Lucia continues on the partial shutdown and on a 10-hour curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. The country remains at a very critical position in the implementation of the national response to the COVID-19 threat. The public must know that many of the measures instituted must be sustained in an effort to achieve low COVID levels in the country. Everyone is asked to note that as essential services are made available to the public, the guidelines for social distancing need to be adhered to at all times in the interest of the health and safety of the public. In the context of this, we all need to be reminded that the threat of COVID-19 still exists and will continue to be with us for a while. Some of the national protocols include stay at home as much as possible unless it is for food or medical purposes, avoid mass crowd events and social gatherings, practice social distancing and good personal hygiene. The public is also advised against going to public places with flu-like symptoms, including fever, coughing, and sneezing. When visiting the supermarket or public places, refrain from touching items unless you intend to purchase them. The Department of Health and Wellness reminds that the country is still on a national scale down. 
As such, individuals should only leave their houses for essential goods. Individuals are also urged to use face masks or scarves when going to public places such as the supermarkets. The face mask or scarf may be used for source control by reducing potential exposure risk from infected persons during the pre-symptomatic period. The department also reminds the public to continue to focus on the maintenance of standard recommendations to prevent the spread of infection. These measures will support current efforts to protect the health and safety of all citizens. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs wishes to advise that in addition to hardware stores, manufacturers and owners of home and convenience stores who produce and sell essential items, permission has been granted for retailers and distributors of computers and office supplies, except furniture, to commence operation from Tuesday, April 21, 2020. The Ministry of Commerce urges businesses to visit our website www.commerce.gov.lc for the application form and other relevant documents to seek permission for business operation. All businesses must adhere to the administrative and in-store operational protocols issued by the Ministry of Health. A copy is available on our website. The Ministry takes this opportunity to thank the business community for its cooperation and support over the past months and looks forward to continue working with stakeholders as we endeavour to mitigate the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic and return to normal operations in the near future. The government of St. Lucia is working assiduously to repatriate St. Lucia nationals stuck abroad due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On Tuesday, 21st April 2020, some eight cruise employees were brought home after several days off the coast of Barbados. Details in this report. Eight St. Lucia nationals were on Tuesday, April 21st, repatriated to St. Lucia. The nationals are employees of Norwegian Cruise Line who were anchored off the coast of Barbados from April 9th of this year. With the help of the government of Barbados, a chartered flight touched down at the George F. L. Charles Airport at approximately 11.30 a.m. Eight um, cruise workers from the Norwegian Spirit were repatriated into St. Lucia. They were received by our team and this was coordinated through the cruise line, through the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of External Affairs. They were received as per our protocols and they were screened and they were taken to the Rodney Bay Public Health facility where they'll be quarantined for a period of 14 days. The Department of Health and Wellness is working in tandem with key agencies, including the Ministries of External Affairs and Tourism and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority in undertaking the repatriation of citizens. Our report today suggests that there are over 500 of our nationals who are stuck abroad um, with the cruise industry being shut down. The difficulties we have been experiencing is that as we try to repatriate them, the Center for Disease Control has said that uh, cruise lines cannot allow anyone to get off the various ships because of the tremendous concern that they have had uh, with coronavirus. I want our families to know that we're doing everything at a diplomatic level, at a level of discussing with the airlines, uh, discussions with the um, Florida Cruise and Caribbean Association, the cruise industry's representative body, to bring our nationals home. With such a vast number of St. Lucia nationals desirous of returning home at a time when there are travel restrictions globally, the Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, the Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, says this must be done with the observation of health and safety protocols. And regarding as a matter of high priority is to see how we can continue to collaborate to bring more of the St. Lucians home and to assure you as well that our government will work with the agencies to ensure that as soon as it is practically possible and safe to do so, we will ensure that all of our St. Lucians are brought home safely. The government is working to repatriate more nationals in the days and weeks ahead. From the Government Information Service, I am Rog Varo Lawrence reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. Wash your hands. Wash them right.
with soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. The government of St. Lucia recently announced a social stabilization program geared towards providing immediate relief to individuals who had lost their jobs and income earning opportunities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Part of the relief effort encompasses the provision of funds to these individuals through the National Insurance Corporation. However, the current act does not make provision for payments under these circumstances. Thus, the bill was laid in the House of Assembly for the appropriate amendment. The Minister for Labour and Parliamentary Representative for Castries North during the sitting of Parliament on Tuesday weighed in on the National Insurance Corporation Amendment Bill. He explained that no effort is being spared to ensure that those affected are provided the necessary aid. We get the details in this report. Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour and Parliamentary Representative for Castries North, Honorable Stephenson King, indicated that the Labour Department, once it realized that a large number of individuals were soon to become unemployed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, immediately prepared to address the situation. The Labour Minister noted that a number of entities were engaged by the Department, including the Central Statistical Office of St. Lucia, so as to decide the way forward. Minister Honorable King explained that this is where the National Insurance Corporation came in. However, before it could act, changes in the legislation were required. The NIC consists of some 83,977 contributors, and as per the amendment, some 30% must be affected to activate the economic relief program, among other stipulations. This amendment, Mr. Speaker, provides for that. Because if tonight this legislation, this amendment to the legislation is not passed, the NIC has no authority under the existing legislation to make any payments to anybody. So what the NIC did, Mr. Speaker, the way out was to get the amendment done. And the amendment provides for doing a number of things. First, it provides for the establishment of the economic relief program. And it says, Mr. Speaker, the board may establish, may establish an economic relief fund and program where 30% or more of insured persons have suffered a loss of income as a result of a pandemic declared by the World Health Organization. So this economic relief fund, Mr. Speaker, as far as I, as far as I interpret this here, and the lawyers can help me better than I can help myself, is that it qualifies the economic relief fund as being one established to provide relief where 30%, 30%. So an economic relief fund will not be established for a handful of people getting the flu and falling sick. But in this case, it calls on the qualification, qualification by the World Health Organization, which will declare a pandemic. The hardest hit sector was the hospitality sector. This, of course, according to the minister, has a multiplying effect, as majority of those who have lost their jobs have dependents relying on them for support. The minister reassured that the economic relief program, while seeking to help those in need, would not be abused. He explained that there are certain conditions that individuals must meet to be eligible to benefit from the program. He or she is under the pensionable age on the date that he or she makes the claim under section, six, under section 65B. D. B. He or she is engaged in insurable employment on the prescribed date. C, he or she has paid not less than the prescribed contributions, and he or she has paid contributions for the prescribed contribution period. So 
Mr. Speaker, what it says is that in order to qualify under this program, you cannot just walk off the sidewalk or walk off the streets and say, I worked, I lost my job, I need a contribution. It is saying that there are certain standards you must meet. You must have contributed, you've contributed up to a period of time, demonstrating that you're employed at the time because you cannot claim if you were laid off or if you lost your job before the pandemic was declared. So it protects the, the institution. It ring fences the institution and makes, makes sure that it is not a scandal where anybody can walk in and make a claim. The bill during the sitting went through all its stages and was adopted by the committee without amendments. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries notifies all holders of tourism taxi registration plates that effective Tuesday, April 27, 2020, applications for renewal or registration of vehicle licenses will be received only on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 12 noon. Kindly note that all documentation should be dropped off at the reception desk for processing, however with strict adherence to the following protocols. Wearing of appropriate protective face masks, sanitizing of hands before handing over documents, and maintaining social distancing within and outside of the reception area and environs. A maximum of three persons will be allowed to conduct transactions in the reception area. Please be reminded to remain at home if you are sick. The Ministry of Tourism can be contacted at the following numbers for any inquiries regarding your request. 720-6758, 727-2010, 720 or 720-1585. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au tard, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est pas responsable pour les formations en gouvernement cette ci à ce GIS, à ce Webby Télévision National Pays à NTN, qu'a posé tout nouvelle à Creole. Posé tout, Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une grande quantité de pays qui perd du travail en chemin pour trouver un bon soulagement au gouvernement du pays. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a présenté une motion à Kai Consit Madi. Côté assurance nationale PIA, ça c'est NIC, qui a eu une assistance de sous-confinance pour essayer de changer l'économie cette ici vivant pour une autre trois ou six mois pour venir. Le Premier ministre Chasney fait public la compagnie qui a initié ça là, qui a l'occasionné pour le gouvernement de payer 33 pour 80 millions de dollars à trois ou six mois pour le peuple ici qui a perdu le travail à cause de la maladie de Corona qui a menacé le pays. Selon le Premier ministre Chasné, en ces 55 000 personnes qui ont eu l'assurance nationale, 45 000 qui ont eu le support financier parce qu'ils ont perdu le travail. L'autre 10 000, c'est les civils, les policiers, les pompiers, les autres, dans le secteur public. Le Premier ministre a continué pour expliquer des gros soulagements qui ont été portés pour l'autre 6 ou 3 mois. Il dit qu'il est très appréciable pour la main charitable de l'assurance nationale, ça c'est l'ASIA. Il fait peuple à comprendre que la situation économique est terrible. Le conseil a conseillé cette lycée pour prendre une bonne précaution en façon de dépenser. Il conseille pour les acheter un sac nécessaire seulement. Il fait un appel pour cette lycée coopérer et puis le gouvernement. Et aussi, il y en a l'autre pour faciliter la machine économique au pays plus swift en bas de la situation malade de Corona. Le Premier ministre Chasné n'y a pas qui 3 millions pour 80 millions. Qui a porté bon soukou pour poche pour ceux qui ont trouvé assistance à la gouvernement. Le Premier ministre Chasné a annoncé que l'assurance nationale, ça c'est NIC, c'est une institution d'assistance pour les gens qui ont été traités, qui ont été accueillis financièrement en région Caribla. Eh bien, si pas ça, c'est une qui ont été avancé. Le Premier ministre a dit que NIC a ni plus que 2 millions de dollars à valeur propriétaire et 3 millions à l'argent comptant. En parlant de ça, la présentation du Premier ministre en Caïe Consit m'a dit en référence pour le logement confus. Il fait public la comprendre que c'était une décision qui était très bonne pour faire. Mais c'est faux, il était fait. 
pour protéger la santé du peuple. Il si. y a vrai qui, en plus, le monde a approché concerné Kabawe qui ferme Kamande est en plus en plus souple pour considérer pour virer les les seules licences pour vendre boissons pour un ministre chasse déclaré qui c'était une décision qui était très difficile mais il était très nécessaire pour te contrôler des stats sociales pour préserver santé publique en pays pour un ministre dit qu'il y a déjà qu'à planer qui plus vite ça peut virer ouvert c'est pour ouvert virer ouvert Kabawe et les Kaivini plus acceptable pour pour acheter ça là pour vers avoir un pays à retourner pour savoir retourner normal ouais mais ça qui fait public là ça il faut informer public là sur ça ouais mais cela dit aussi l'année en long mon religion qui qui veut vivre en l'église pour participer à service religieux le gouvernement chacun discute qu'il est et qu'il est nécessaire pour faire ça possible aussi Yo gagne travailler qui était à bord bateau touristique Norwegian Spirit. J'ai retourné à cette ci Grand développement ça a venu en réalité après grand effort gouvernement cette ci et puis gouvernement Baba de fait. Yut c'est cette ci ça là qui à bord bateau Norwegian ça là depuis le 9 avril dehors la voie de pays Baba. Département santé te bail autorisation pour yon avion transporter ces huit cette ci ça là viré en pays et qui ont débattu à son aéroport George F. Charles à la vigie à 11h bon matin, mardi 21 avril 2020. Mais toutes huit se travaillent à la route bateau touristique là, qui en quarantaine pour 14 jours. Selon le chef officier médical, c'est le docteur Sharon Belma George, les officiers de santé étaient présents pour recevoir ce travail et ça a continué à coordonner et puis bateau touristique là par le ministère des Affaires touristiques et ministère des Affaires les étrangères. Selon le ministre qui est responsable pour affaires touristiques, honorable Dominique Fede, ou rapport qui a montré que l'année a près 500 sétrissiens qui pour ça retourner en pays parce que l'année a plusieurs restrictions et le port qui fermé avec un bateau touristique qui a sous la mer parce qu'il n'y a pas de permission pour entrer en pièce la Ça C'est très difficile parce qu'il n'est pas possible pour le naviger et pour le gouvernement assister. Mais le ministre de la la famille, c'est que le gouvernement a fait un hôtel diplomatique, une discussion et une association de touristique en Floride avec les avions pour garder qui plus vite il peut trouver un vol pour cette ici, ça la retourner à pays. Le ministre des Affaires les étrangères, on a Sarah Flood Bobley. J'ai dit que le gouvernement a continué à collaborer à base de restrictions qui en place pour que cette liste-là soit ça en pays. Le ministre a assez aussi que le gouvernement a fait tout ce qui est possible pour que ce travail vire cette liste sans essor. Le gouvernement a continué pour conseiller cette liste à l'autre pays pour faire contact et puis l'ambassade de cette liste avec le bureau pour faire cette liste qui est en l'autre pays. Et c'est comme ça. Nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour votre temps pour vous avoir une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore se dire que ça fait la vie. Je vais vous présenter une autre nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, je vais vous présenter une journée. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.